He quit, I think. He just ran out. He's like, wait, one bolted out the door. Wait one second. I hate this place. Kate Nolan, thanks for watching and also for not having anything better to do at 9.30 on a Sunday. Sure. You and me both. Coming up tonight, I fulfill a lifelong dream of driving a Zamboni at the world's most famous arena. Alonzo Mourning and his gigantic championship ring stop by. And we finally pop Garbage Time's Rob Ryan Cherry. That sounds disgusting. But first, let's go ahead and take a look back at the week in sports. Cubs pitcher Edwin Jackson missed a spring training start because he was stuck in traffic. He didn't get to the field until three hours after the game had started, so he was able to pitch the second inning. <laughs> Andrew McCutcheon recently cut off all his hair for charity, and it was his first haircut in eight years. The charity is called Stinky Hair Collectors. <laughs> It really is. I made my donation last year. Vin Diesel says Furious... Se oh, we need to pay attention to this headline. Vin Diesel says that Furious 7 will win the Oscar for Best Picture. Then he held up a handmade drawing of his house and asked if that could also be the best picture. <laughs> it's good. A member of the 1984 Georgetown National Championship basketball team won the lottery and is using the money to open a restaurant. See, kids? If you work hard and do your best, you'll eventually win the lottery. <laughs> it was revealed this week that Michael Jordan talked trash to extras on the set of Space Jam. A bleat, a bleat, a bleat, a bleat. That guy's a real jerk, said an anonymous source. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. Um, uh, in other news, WrestleMania is going on right now. And OK, I know I'm going to lose a lot of you here. I have to admit, I know absolutely nothing about wrestling. I'm sorry, but one of our producers, Dave, is a huge WWE fan, and he's always trying to get WWE into the show. So, since it's WrestleMania, to appease him, here's what we're going to do. Dave is going to show me some pictures of the guys competing? Is it competing in WrestleMania? Uh, and I'm going to try to guess what their wrestler names are, based solely on what they look like. Okay, are you ready, Dave? All right, show me the first picture. <laughs> Seriously? Okay. I would say his wrestling name is Adult Human Chucky Finster. Am I right? <laughs> what is it? What is it? Heath Slater. That was close. All right, next picture. Are these real? That's a wrestler? OK, uh, well, he's got the, the, the shirt. So I'd say he's like a spring, spring breaker of the necks. <laughs> but also, the, he could be the Mean Lantern. I'm going to go with the Mean Lantern. Bray Wyatt. <laughs> they have just like first and last names. Whatever happened to like The Undertaker? Anyway, next. <laughs> okay, well, this guy was clearly in The Hobbit. Uh, <laughs> he is the Lord of the Ring. <laughs> or Eric Rowan. I am not doing well at this. Okay, next. Uh, let me guess, John Smith. No, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, okay, he looks like a magician, like a, like a flamboyant magician. Uh, so it's Siegfried and Roids. <laughs> Is that, fan, that was close. Fandango was close. All right, that's it, right? I don't know, I did okay. I didn't know they go by like John Johnson. <laughs> Wrestling got boring. Uh, okay, lastly, Rex Ryan is back to fat shaming his brother, again. Before we get into this story, I have to disclose that Rob Ryan is my bae. Or he, he is bae? I don't understand how that phrase works, but it's huge in the target demographic. Uh, so now that my bias is perfectly clear, let's go ahead and journalism. Here is what Rex said about his brother this week at the NFL owners meetings. He believes in himself so much, he won't get a haircut and keeps that belly the way it is. He's darn determined to show the league that I'm going to be a head coach and do it my way. No, you're not. It's unfortunate. I'm still trying to get that message across to him. Uh, pro tip, Rex, if you want to get a message to Rob, try putting it on the end of a popsicle stick. <laughs> but seriously, Rex, what the hell? Your brother is a saint. He is handsome and caring and fun-loving and funyun-loving, and that's why he's so sexy, I mean successful. Where did you get this idea that head coaches have to look nice anyway? Was it, was it Jim Harbaugh's pleated khakis from Walmart? 
or, or was it Andy Reid's striking resemblance to an animated bowl of fruit punch? <laughs> or No, no, I get it. I get it. It's because the best coach of all time looks like a person who just lost all of their belongings in a fire. <laughs> Remember when Mike Nolan and Jack Del Rio both tried to wear suits on the sidelines? It was weird. Coaches are supposed to be kind of schlubby. I mean, the more the man at the helm of my team is like my dad, the better. Because it makes it so much easier for me to both adore him and then blame him for everything that goes wrong in my life. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers, though, just to see if Rex has a point, if slimming down really does make you a better coach. In 2010, Rex weighed in at 300 pounds and went 11-5, and five, leading the Jets to the AFC Championship. In 2014, when Rex had dropped to a slender 218 pounds, 4-12. and 12. The proof is in the lack of pudding. <laughs> to be fair, great pun. To be fair, Rex did successfully convince someone to shed some dead weight this year. Unfortunately, it was his boss. The weirdest part of the whole thing, though, is that this is far from the first time Rex has poked fun at his brother for his appearance. Rob, what do you think of your brother, Rex? I, I think Rex is a great coach. I think he's a great person. You know, there's no question about that. It's just that he's very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. He is looking bad. He's about 290. He should have had the lap band. Did not have the lap band surgery when I did, so that's clearly a mistake from him. And there are tons of other times that he's brought it up, but it just wasn't on camera. Because, you know, they add 10 pounds. And we can't have that. But he mentions Rob's weight and lap bands and how Rob looks, like, every time he has our attention. And I just can't figure out why. Am I getting, you know, paid to... As a, a paid spokesman for lap band, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't say. So you're throwing your own brother under the bus so you can cash those lap band checks? Rex, you lap dog, you. You know, the real reason Rob hasn't been offered a head coaching position is because his head coach brother kind of sucks. If Rex was more successful, I guarantee Rob's chances of becoming a head coach would triple. And how do I know that? Two words, Jay Gruden. <laughs> Rob, baby, don't listen to them. You're a national treasure. If these owners really don't want to give you a job because of the way you look, well, f them. I don't mind being the breadwinner. I can bring home the bacon. I just, if I'm going to bring back enough bacon for both of us, I think I need to borrow your truck. <laughs> now let's go eat a goddamn snack. <laughs> Up next, should teams downgrade prospects who fail drug tests? Speaking of which, I still haven't taken mine for Fox. Oops. Welcome back to Garbage Time, guys. If you're watching this online, do me a favor and close your other tabs. Just, I get jealous. Uh, this week I got a chance to hang out with NBA Hall of Famer Alonzo Mourning, who was kind enough to squeeze his seven-foot frame into my tiny little studio. Uh, after a dominant four years at Georgetown, Zoe was a star for the Charlotte Hornets and the Miami Heat, winning an NBA title in 2006 after coming all the way back from a kidney disease that required a transplant. The man is absolutely amazing and hilarious. Watch us talk about stuff now. Over here. I saved you a seat. Oh, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Good to see you, Zoe. Uh, nice to see you, too. I got you uh, water. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're so kind. I mean, it's just all I had the money for. You've teamed up with Dove Men Plus Care. Yes, I have. Right? On this uh, Real Strength Moments campaign, right. which kind of highlights how men can feel strong doing things like caring for their families right. uh, or helping others. You're a strong man. I like to think I am in a lot of different ways. Did you cry during the notebook? You know what? I refused to watch it because I was afraid I was going to cry. Do you use a loofah in the shower? How about this? I give you one better. I exfoliate. Oh. So you won the 2006 NBA championship with the Heat. Right. Uh, Shaq has famously said that uh, you guys did a lot of partying and drinking that year, and he has no idea how you guys pulled off the win, were you a part of that group? Did you go out partying with Never, I'm a saint. <laughs> Didn't do any of those things. No, no, no. I was part of the camaraderie. Listen, in, in order for teams to bond. Good answer. Yeah, in order for teams to bond, they got to spend time together. One of your teammates was Gary Payton. Yes. Who oh is now, a, he's a Fox Sports One guy. Oh, wow. You must have a Gary Payton drinking story. Because I've met Gary Payton one time, and I have a Gary Payton <laughs> drinking story. I do know that he does drink because I've, I've watched his body change. <laughs> <laughs> now he has this, like, he has this little belly now. 
You know, so evidently <laughs> something's happening. Something is happening. <laughs> He's it's the something alcohol. In blame it on the a, 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 a <laughs> alcohol. So, is there anyone you can think of, you know, from your day or even before that that would be more successful if they played today? If Michael played today, yeah, he probably averaged almost fifty a game. I mean, he really would because you wouldn't be able to touch him on the perimeter, so he'd be shooting a ton of free throws. Yeah, so when everybody does this, like, Michael LeBron comparison, it's like you, you almost can't – it's not the same game it's that they're the playing. It's not the same game. You're right. It's not. It's not the same game. I would have loved to see LeBron Back play, play during – in the 90s, in the early 90s, late 80s. Well, he would have been a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you would famously scowl after, like, a big block or a, a – and I – my problem is mm -hmm. the ends of my mouth mm -hmm. <laughs> naturally go up – I don't want them to, but they do. So I can't frown. Let me like, see. I can't get the ends in my mouth to I go. I can get you to frown. That's what I'm saying. I need you to teach me how to mean mug. Can you scowl and then I'll try to imperse, like, mimic what you're doing? I had too much teeth. <laughs> <laughs> no teeth. It, no kind teeth. of grit your teeth together. Like, grit it together. Like, uh -uh. Don't show like teeth, though. I feel like an angry chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> Like, make me intimidating. How do I do it? Do chipmunks get angry? They do now. <laughs> okay. Is that a good one? Uh, Are you scared? I'm very, I'm intimidated. Very. I didn't, I'm trying to think of an angry chipmunk. Maybe if you take the chipmunk's nuts away. <laughs> <laughs> that would make me angry if you took my nuts away. <laughs> now that you are not a professional basketball player. Uh -huh. Do you find that being that tall is just an inconvenience? I gotta pay more for my clothes. I can't just go to Ross for Less or... <laughs> uh, Which is where everybody goes. Yeah, or Marshalls. <laughs> there it is. Or the department store. Right. What about Big and clothes. Tall? Or I can go to Big and Tall, but it's not as stylish as Neiman's <laughs> or Saks. You know what I'm sure. saying? Exactly, so I gotta go to Big and Tall and it's big, it's like really big on you, or it doesn't fit you. It doesn't have that Euro fit to it, you know, Ooh. that sexy Euro fit. Pretty it's weird. even hard for me to clip my nails because the nail clipper is too small. You know, that's a problem I never would have thought of, but you're right. I got big hands, look how big my hands are. <laughs> Don't they make big ones for toes? Yes, they do. They that would be pretty gross. Yes, but you could are. use that and I then just that, yeah. clean it with some Dove <laughs> products. Oh. <laughs> one of the things you're known for is an impressive comeback. Right. So I right. am gonna burn you super hard and I wanna see if you're still impressive at comebacks. So what are you like? Eight feet tall? Standing on my wallet. Oh! What? <laughs> What's the next one? Come on, give it a go. I don't think I was prepared. No, you know what? I think I'm good. So you stay here. You finish the game. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm going to go. Fine. Leave. Thank you so much, though. Give me yeah. a little bit more room anyway. <laughs> Be gone. <laughs> Aw, isn't he just the most lovable? Seven foot monster. <laughs> Coming up, I drive a Zamboni at MSG. Is that enough for you to not change the channel for like two minutes? Marijuana is now legal in four states and our nation's capital. But this week, a failed drug test by promising draft prospect Randy Gregory has everybody freaking out, man. He isn't the first NFL player who's dabbled in the weed and he won't be the last. Joining me now to talk about drugs is online sports editor at The New Yorker, Caitlin Kelly. Hi, Caitlin. Thanks for having me here. Oh, Katie. thank you for being here in our tiny little studio. <laughs> Let's talk about weed. It's, it's not illegal in a lot of states. It's decriminalized in a ton of states. And, and these kids who are in college could be going to school and let's say they go to school in Washington State where they can legally smoke weed. Then they come to the NFL and they're like, oh, you're, on, you're part of level one of our program now, which means you're on like probation. Yeah. I don't get it. And I feel like even the NFL is kind of realizing how ridiculous they are because, you know, uh, in their, their newest agreement, they're like, oh, you do some coke and you get, you know, suspended for four games and all these things and then, but, but weed, you know, just, just a little different. Yeah, but even when they like revamped their policies recently, they, I think they doubled, right, their threshold for weed when they do their test and it's still less than like Major League Baseball. I like almost half, it's yeah. almost half. But what I don't get the most is like, the NFL, the, with all this, like Greg Hardy and, and Adrian Peterson, everything, and 
like Ray McDonald was like, oh, well, he hasn't been convicted. So the law says that he's not, so we are gonna give him another chance. But with weed, where you could easily get away with doing it, it's not illegal. They're like, well, we have our own policy in place for this. And you're not allowed to do that. It just makes the league, I mean, to say it makes the NFL look hypocritical. Like, of course it does. Everything the league does makes it look hypocritical. The NFL pisses me off for a number of reasons, but this just makes me so mad because it's not a performance enhancing drug. So why do you actually care if I smoke weed as a football player of yours? And if you read the drug policy, it's so frustrating because you know they point to you know, athletes being role models, not be smirching the league's reputation. Oh, of course. The, the the fact that because of substance abuse, some players have gotten injured or died. It's like you're a football. It really says that's that. like what you are doing to it all of your says players. That in the drug it policy. actually, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. How long is it going to take them to adapt and fix it? Well, one, if there's like a federal law passed. Two, I feel like once marijuana companies have enough money to start buying Super Bowl ads, like that is the <laughs> moment that we will start them, you know, seeing them be like, oh, well, we'll slide it over with alcohol and like, you know, yeah, we'll just test it out when thing. you feel like f***ed up other places. If marijuana could buy a Super Bowl Willie ad. Willie Nelson, please buy a Super Bowl <laughs> ad for next year. I can't focus now because now I'm thinking of what a Super Bowl ad for weed would be. It cannot be any worse than like a GoDaddy.com ad. No, definitely <laughs> or not. Or that nationwide one where nationwide because your kid died. No kids have died from marijuana <laughs> and apparently some facts. kids have died from nationwide. So. Medical facts. Um, yeah, and then lastly, real quick, one of the most amazing things I think is that back when Calvin Johnson was at the Combine and he was like, oh, you know, I just want to admit, you know, I smoked weed in college and everyone was like, uh-oh, is this guy going to be a problem on any team that he gets drafted to? And looking at it now, it's like anybody would kill to have Calvin Johnson on their team. Yeah, they're coming around and I think kids, you know, at the Combine are saying, yeah, I smoked weed in college like everyone else does. Like, oh, no. um, not us. Not, but like no, every, of course not, Mom. All the um, other people, yeah. All my, the other my people. mom watches the show too, so <laughs> definitely not. Uh, thank you for being here and oh. for talking with me about weed. After this, we can go outside and talk about it some more. Yeah. Um, coming up, I let me drive a Zamboni in Madison Square Garden for some reason. Who knows why? Don't go away. Welcome back to Garbage Time. Please direct your mean tweets about this show to at Dalai Lama. <laughs> the next segment uh, is probably for me more so than for you guys. It's been my lifelong dream to drive a Zamboni. I know that's a weird dream. Uh, it turns out, though, one of the perks of having your own TV show is that you get to do these kinds of things. Like, people let you do them. So here's me driving a Zamboni at Madison Square Garden. Thanks, New York Rangers. <laughs> Today, I am going to drive the Zamboni for the first time ever. I have been wanting to do this, no joke, since I was about six. Jack, thank you for having me here. First question, how long have you been driving the Zamboni? 27 years, one Stanley Cup, one All-Star game. Ooh. Is the mustache required for the job? Absolutely. I didn't grow mine out. I was out. born with it. So give me some tips for, for driving the Zamboni for the first time. Well, it's, it's not a race car. Top speed is all of nine miles an hour. So should I be nervous? Yes. <laughs> you should be nervous. Yes. Are you? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm really excited. I can't wait any longer. Okay, let's go. Let's put let's you on. Let's do it. I'm so excited. You're good. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Holy <laughs> sh**. Bear left. Go straight through the logos. This is scarier than I thought it would be. Keep going, no, no, okay, turn, turn, hot, hot, hot right. I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna Run hit you. Run these guys over, that's I'm it, okay? Hit you. Straight in and out, there you go. You've done this before, right? I have not. You did, a, you did a test one before you came down here? Yeah, I practiced a bunch last night. There you go. Uh, I plowed a go. driveway. Now your hair is flowing. <laughs> Good stuff. Doing all right, relax. yeah? You're gonna yeah, be, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it now. I'm coming for your job. There you go. <laughs> We're going to turn towards the door. Do you want me to take it out? I or... can try. Is right about here? 
Put it in neutral? Yeah. There you go. So do I, do I get the job? Absolutely. Yes! I'm quitting the show. I should add, uh, Jack told me I could handle the ice if the Rangers make the Stanley Cup Finals. So, can't believe I'm going to say this, but I guess go... Range, I can't finish that sentence. Uh, <laughs> lastly, it's time for the Garbage Time Hero of the Week. This week, it's this guy. <laughs> what? Okay, I get you, man. Seriously, I do. People may be laughing at you because, well, that's not how you use that machine. But I'm sorry, that massive piece of metal with wires hanging off it? Not exactly intuitive. Good for you for getting up, going to the gym today, and just going for it. Whatever, whatever it is that you're doing. Screw the haters, man. You are my hero. And that's the show, guys. That's it. Uh, don't forget to send me your questions via Twitter, Facebook, or email. And we will tackle those on Wednesday in Junk Mail, which you can find on my YouTube channel, along with other digital exclusives and highlights from the show. And as usual, this whole episode will be online starting tomorrow at is the room left on the screen? Uh, foxsports.com slash garbage time. Many thanks to Alonzo Morning and Caitlin Kelly for being here today. You don't have to go home, Woo! but you can't stay Woo! here. Unless you're at home, then stay there. See you next week.